So, you want to main Moira. Make that big boss less special. It ain't no game, but they say I'm welcome to the second level. Hello and welcome back to another So You Want a Main. This time around, we're diving into another main healer, the delightfully spiteful Irish scientist, Moira. Moira is on the cutting edge of genetic engineering, searching for a way to rewrite the fundamental building blocks of life. She has a very grey moral compass and is willing to work with anyone who will make her work a reality, although she isn't very fond of Overwatch. She discovered a way to alter DNA at a molecular level, and after joining Blackwatch at Gabrielle Reyes' request, soon found herself implementing some of those techniques on the man who hired her, leading to the ghost-like entity now referred to as Reaper. After Overwatch disbanded and needing a new place to procure funding and continue her research, she was invited to join a scientist collective in the city of Oasis, and selected to be their Minister of Genetics. However, some whispered that her science was already being funded by more shadowy figures by the name of Talon, and they had been utilizing her technology for years. By the time Doomfist returned to Talon, Moira already had a seat on the Inner Council, where she and Doomfist work side by side to advance the evolution of mankind. They believed my methods were too radical, too controversial, and they tried to silence me. Moira is a main healer with a very dualistic nature. Her left hand heals multiple allies for 80 health per second with a yellow mist sprayed in front of her. When she stops spraying, an additional 65 health per second over a 4 second period will also heal the subjects further. Her healing spray has a reach of 15 meters and this healing will not penetrate through enemy barriers. Her right hand deals damage at a rate of 50 health points per second with the use of a purple long-range beam-like weapon. As she deals damage, she also heals herself for 30 health points per second. She can soft lock onto anything within a 20 meter range, using her right hand also refills her healing resource at a rate of 12.5% per second. Her kit consists of these two handy resources, alongside the ability to fire a projectile orb from each hand that will either heal or do damage, depending on selection. Moira also has one of the best escape options in the game by the way of her Fade ability. Her ultimate ability is called Coalescence, and consists of a large singular beam that pushes forward to a max range of 30 meters, doing 70 damage per second and 140 healing per second to allies, alongside 50 healing per second to herself. The damage and healing are done simultaneously. Playing Moira is all about maximizing resources and survivability whilst making split-second decisions about which hand will take the lead role for the next few seconds. Moira's hands are her main weapons. One of them giveth, one of them taketh away. Half the battle of playing the role of Moira is knowing when to do what on a second-by-second -second basis. As mentioned in the overview, her left hand heals for 80 health per second with a direct hit, then continues to heal for 65 HP per second for the following 4 seconds after you've stopped spraying. This is hugely important to keep in mind, and one of the most easy mistakes to make for a brand new Moira. Your healing is a finite resource. The worst thing you can do when playing Moira is run out of it. If you ever hear her not ready voice line, somewhere along the way you expended way too much of it without topping yourself up by either passively waiting or doing damage with her right hand. The trick is to simply use short bursts of spray in front of you, usually in a sweeping arc if multiple teammates are ahead of you. Everyone you touch will get 195 HP over the next 4 seconds. Then remember that your right hand has a 20 meter reach. When you're not healing, you may as well have that held down scanning for enemies and getting a top up on your healing resource for when you truly need it. If you can keep your beam locked on somebody for one full second, you will refill your healing by 12.5%. Keep it locked down for a few seconds and you're in a pretty good spot for the next fight. 
It's worth pointing out that shield damage does not count towards regeneration. Don't waste your time with it. In fact, as a general rule, don't touch shields at all. Your measly impact is not worth the focus. Better to be scanning for flankers and making callouts. There are some times when simply holding down healing on the tank in front of you is the best thing you can do in that situation, if they are being hard focused. These moments are rare though, and if you already have a health orb bouncing around, then usually short bursts are more than enough to keep your tanks up. Her healing is fired in a cone-shaped spray in front of her, whilst her damage is more of a soft-locking beam. People will often say she has auto-lock, which isn't true. If you imagine there is a large circular hitbox around an enemy, Moira's grasp when pointed at the general direction of an enemy will lock on, if within that circle. Now when that circle is doing Genji flips over your head, or blinking around you and recalling like Tracer, or uppercutting and seismic slamming behind you as Doomfist, your tracking actually matters. Making sure you can at least make a sweeping 180 degree turn with one motion on your sensitivity settings is ideal for these types of scenarios. People also tend to underrate the distance of her grasp and how far it can reach. Is there a pesky Pharah hovering above your team, just out of reach of your short range damage healing heroes? Guess who can pull that birdie right out of the sky? Sure, you may have to make sure your dodging is up to par, but her health pool is so low you can usually get her two-thirds of the way dead before she even realizes what's happening. Of course, the trade-off here is that while you're doing that and staring at the sky, your front line could be falling due to lack of heals. This is the duality of Moira. Tank down. Both tanks down. With the use of her handy backpack, Moira has figured out a way to quite literally bottle her abilities in a handy projectile orb that she can lob at allies or enemies. In exactly the same manner as her hands, she gets to choose whether this orb will heal or deal damage. The damage orb does up to 200 damage over 4 seconds at 50 damage per second. The healing orb does up to 300 healing over 4 seconds at a rate of 75 per second. As usual, her healing far outperforms her damage. This projectile travels at a speed of 20 meters per second, but will slow down to 5.5 meters per second when it is tethered to an enemy or an ally. Her orbs will stick around for a whopping 10 seconds, which means the best way to make use of them is to keep them in the desired area for as long as possible using map geometry. It is far better to utilize parallel walls, small rooms, or alcoves to keep them in the area you need for longer than to just shoot one off at an ally or an enemy. This depends on the situation, of course, as with anything involving Moira. Is it better to fire a health orb towards that Pharah to keep her alive long enough to ult? Or would that have been better as a damage orb thrown at the enemy Widowmaker, forcing her to move out of position? Or maybe it would be better just to bounce one around the near vicinity to either heal your team or gain ult charge for yourself with the damage orb. Decisions, decisions. Couple things to bear in mind with Moira's orbs. They are a projectile, which means that they can be eaten by D.Va or deflected by Genji, which is why she was largely useless in dive comp. Orbs can also not damage Symmetra or Torpion's turrets and will be reflected by a May wall. They are rather effective at building your own ultimate though. Every tick on an enemy's health is a percentage gained in ult charge for you. Healing allies still get you there faster though, but you can supplement it with the occasional damage orb. Some higher ranked ladder players have mastered the ability to utilize exact map geometry to throw an orb from spawn and have it land on point before they do. There are plenty of YouTube videos on the subject if you're interested on getting super advanced with your Moira play. Fade is, in my humble opinion, one of the single best abilities for any hero in Overwatch. Basically, at the press of a button, Moira will simply evaporate into mist and reappear 0.8 seconds later. She has a 15 meter max range of movement and can move at 18.75 meters per second. During this short window of time, Moira is invulnerable, invisible, and completely undetectable by the enemy team. It is the perfect escape move. You can still control her movement during this time, so you have the ability to fade into a room, around a corner, or for more advanced Moiras, use Fade Jump to reach high ground in a flash. Fade Jumping is an advanced Moira technique that is honestly so hit and miss in a brawl that it's largely unused by pros. 
In a pinch, though, it might just save your life. You fade jump by fading into a waist level object from somewhere between four to six meters away and pressing jump just before you make contact with the object. If you hit it right, you'll hit the map geometry in such a way that you essentially get a massive upwards boost of momentum, shooting you into the air and leaving you able to land on high ground close by. A perfect example of an area where this actually comes in handy is First Point Anubis. You can fade into that center circular stone area and into the corner for high ground. Generally speaking though, it's so hit and miss under the pressure of a team fight that it rarely makes sense to attempt and have to potentially wait another 6 seconds for the cooldown to end before you can try again, when you could have just faded into cover instead. Where Moira's fade really comes into its own though is avoiding ultimates. Moira can fade out of a graviton surge, time a fade to avoid a point blank diva bomb, fade out of any zoned attack ult like death blossom, barrage, blizzard, shatter, minefield, etc. fade into cover after hearing McCree's high noon, soldier's visor, or ash's bob voice lines, and bait a tire into her then fade through it before it explodes. Realistically, she has the highest survivability of any healer in the game based on this ability alone. If you die as Moira, 90% of the time it's because you have fade on cooldown. Try not to use fade aggressively to engage or to chase kills. A Moira with no fade in a one-on-one -on -one is likely a dead Moira. Moira's ultimate ability is titled Coalescence, and is the culmination of both of her powers in a huge Dragon Ball-like beam that when fired does 70 damage per second to enemies, 140 healing per second to allies, and 50 HP to herself, it gives her a movement speed of 9 meters per second and reaches as far as 30 meters over an 8 second period. Simply put, it's a big beam of healy death that will keep your team topped up and burn down any enemy that happens to get caught in its deadlights. Moira will passively generate 1% ult charge every 4.25 seconds. Added charge can be gained from healing your allies or per tick from throwing damage orb at enemies. Coalescence charges faster than most ultimates in game and as such is often one of the earlier ults used in a team fight. Honestly, you can pretty much use it off cooldown as long as it's intelligently placed. Unlike her basic hand attacks, it also has the added benefit of piercing all barriers. This includes the usually all-encompassing protection of Symmetra's ultimate barrier. In fact, it's one of the better counters to it, since most enemies behind it will be taken by surprise. Just because Coalescence combines your powers doesn't mean you get away with not having to make decisions, of course. There are three main ways to utilize her ultimate and gain value. Number one, use it when your team is low on health for an insane burst of healing, bring everybody back from the brink of death and keep them topped up for the next eight seconds. Number two, use it to pick off backline squishies on the enemy team. Since it pierces through everything, it can be pretty easy to just hard focus on Ana or Zen in the back and burn them down, thus guaranteeing a team fight win. Number three, both. Line yourself and your team up in such a way that you heal them and damage the enemies at the same time. Maximum value can be attained this way, but it isn't always possible. You can get maximum value out of whichever direction you choose by throwing out a biotic orb for either healing or damage just before you ult. This adds to the overall effectiveness of coalescence. I know, right? More decisions. If you remember from the fade section, a Moira with no fade is extremely vulnerable especially one with a gigantic beam pointing exactly to her location. Despite the speed and self-heal of Coalescence, do not mistake yourself for Goku. One Shatter, Rip Tire, or even a Widow Headshot will put you down. Be smart and use the environment and ult tracking to your advantage. When in doubt, choose healing. As I pointed out several times during this video, Moira is all about decision making. Oftentimes, the hand, orb, or subject of your coalescence will decide the outcome of the team fight, and eventually the map. If you're ever on the fence and just can't seem to decide what to do, heal. Moira's healing output is vastly superior to her damage output. 
Sometimes, though, you can get a strange taste for blood, as Moira, the way she glides around the map and simply sucks the energy and life force out of her enemies whilst regenerating her own, seeing the fear in a Genji's eyes when he realizes he can't deflect your grasp, fading through a Doomfist punch, plucking a Pharah out of the sky, getting a 4K coalescence. Since it's so easy to tickle enemies to death with your grasp, it's not uncommon to have gold eliminations or objective kills. Do not confuse this with power. You may be a one-woman wrecking machine at times, but your death-dealing abilities could be enhanced by simply keeping the people designed to deal damage alive. Your healing output is the most prolific of any healer in the game. You just have to make sure your resources are topped up. Keeping a third eye on your resource management will win you games as Moira. There is nothing worse than wasting resources ineffectively on poke damage than having nothing left by the time the real fight breaks out. Don't forget, if you maximize the longevity of your orbs by utilizing the map geometry to make them stick around longer, you can take some of that time your orb is doing work to deal damage and top off your more prolific hand-based healing. On the flip side, it's always a decent idea to try to throw a damage orb towards the spawn door or first approach of the attacking enemy team to try and get a jump start on that ult charge. You're probably going to need that coalescence to keep your tanks up in the first major push. One thing you should avoid doing, though, is wasting that Coalescence if you've already lost more than two team members. Coalescence is an ult that is best used at the start of a fight, or to maintain momentum in a winnable fight. As soon as the fight becomes unwinnable, back off with your Fade to shatter your exit, rejoin your team, prepare to re-engage with Coalescence as your charge. Only use Fade defensively, or when you are 100% certain you can stagger the enemy team without repercussion. Fade is your most powerful ability and mismanagement of it will equal certain death, so it should always be used defensively to avoid the enemy abilities and reposition to a more advantageous place. There are a few times though when you might notice a severely overextended Ana or Zen hiding after a fight loss trying to rejoin their team. In these rare instances, securing the kill and stagger can be worth the offensive fade. Moira has a simple yet effective toolkit. So when she's not necessarily using it, she should be looking around for flankers. Moira's 1v1 potential is insanely high. She can ward off those pesky tracers, Genjis, and Sombras very quickly and keep her fellow support alive in much the same way as Lucio. Since she is also pretty well equipped to deal with any enemy ult, it's in her best interest to make sure the rest of the team knows when one is coming. Alt tracking and or watching for sneaky backline alters like Reaper should be on your list of priorities when you are not actively healing or damaging. Lastly, the more you climb, the higher the mechanical skill of your enemies. Meaning that since you have a fairly predictable run pattern and pretty big hitbox, your positioning will mean the difference between life and death. Hug walls, check corners, fade into better positions, utilize shield. It only takes one Widow headshot to snatch you out of the team fight, and due to your high value, the team will likely crumble thereafter. If nothing else, then due to how aggressively teams push after a healer is downed. So there you have it. Moira is a prolific healer and death dealer who reigns supreme at lower and mid ranks. Simple yet effective toolkit and some of the slickest movement in the game. No other character in Overwatch has to make as many second by second decisions as her though. So make sure you've got your thinking berets on as you utilize the map geometry and your own judgment calls to dominate team fights and push to victory. Thanks for watching. Get into position. Brilliant. They know game, but they say welcome to the second level.